Hi guys, today we are going to be making this cool 2D to 3D text that goes back to 2D. It's really easy to make, quite good fun. I've done two versions here, I've done that one and I've done this one as well. Uh, to make your life easier, I have put the project files on my website. You can download them for absolutely free and do whatever you want with them. Um, you will need to subscribe and you will need to put in your email address, but please note I hate spam, so I won't be spamming you. Let's get into it. The first thing we need is a fusion composition. Um, I've got one already set up here. I'm just going to drag that in and give it some space. If you don't have one, just come over to your media pool, right click in the blank area and hit create new fusion composition. Once you've got your composition on the timeline, right click on it and say open in the fusion page. Here in fusion, the first thing we need to do is add a background. So I'm going to add this and I'm going to change it from a solid color to a gradient. Now, because I like the colors of the previous one, I've actually copied them down and I'll put them in the description as well. So on this one, we're going to give it this color. Just go to the HTML and hit right click and put in like that. And then same in on this one, copy, come in, click on the other one like that, like so. Now the gradient is currently linear. We need it to be radial. And what you need to do is just pull this out like that. All right, next thing we need is a text. So I'm going to bring in a text just here and I'm going to connect it like so. First thing we're going to want do on the text is change the color. We will be changing it back later, but for this, what we'll do is we'll make it a, a green like so. We're going to go to frame zero. Let's type in our text. So we're going to say happy. It's always good to be happy. Let's increase the size a little bit. Normally I'd go a bit lower, but, but just for YouTube, I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So that's a good, good uh, size. I'm going to go to frame zero. And if you come down, you'll see here, it says right on. What we're going to do is take that down to zero and hit the diamond for a keyframe. We're going to go forward to frame 10 and we're going to go the opposite. And when we play that back, we get this. Only thing I'm going to do actually is change the font. I don't like that one. Let's go to my favorite font. Where are you? Prakatishkitu medium. That one, that's the one I like and that's the one we're using. Right. So we've done the 2D part, we need to get into the 3D, which is not difficult. I'm going to drag in a merge 3D, a camera 3D, a render 3D, a text 3D, and I'm going to connect them all together. Also, I'm going to drag in a spotlight. Now, our render 3D here actually connects the 3D world to the 2D world. So I'm going to disconnect this background and take this render 3D and connect it across like so. Now, because we're using a lot of letters, what I'm going to do is actually create another merge. So I'm going to bring in another merge 3D here and all the letters will be connected to this one. And then that all our cameras and lights will get connected to the other one. So we've got our text. First thing I'm going to do is hit F2 and change it name to H. I'm going to come over to the right hand side and hit H in there. Now remember we've changed our font, so what we need to do is go here, find our Pilipilipilipa font, that I can never pronounce that one, Prastik. And there we are. Now we don't see a damn thing, and the reason for that is, let me go to two windows. If I put our camera in the left hand window and move it back, our camera is sitting in the same position as our text, that's why we can't see it. So I'm just going to pull the camera back. Roughly about there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the front view and just bring it up a little by just hitting this arrow here. That'll do. That'll do nicely. Next thing we need to do is we're going to put our text into the window here. We're going to go to the top view. We're going to zoom right down. Coming to the right hand side, go down to the extrusion and give it some depth. There we are. Let's give it some more depth. Next thing we need to do is this dot here is the pivot point. And that means wherever the object rotates, it'll rotate from that point and we need it in the middle. So clicking on the transform tool over here, just move that forward. Oh, we need to make sure I'm on pivot. I nearly did it on the object. So go down to pivot and then just hold the control key. What you can do is move that in like that. So our job is what we want to do now is line that H up with this H here. So we're going to click on the H again, go across the transform, 
I'm going to move it across like so and scale it down. Hold the control key while you're doing it because like I say, it's a real pain in the butt. It's very sensitive. Go down like that and then move it up in the Y and then across in the X. That was the hard part. What we need to do now is go to this letter H, right click on it and hit copy, right click and hit paste. We're going to change it from that name to hit F2 and call it A and then connect it in like that. You've got to come over to the window and actually remember to change the letter. Once you've done that, come over to the transform section and just using the X translation, just move it across to the next letter like so. Uh, we're going to repeat this process for all of them. So copy, paste, and call this one P. So F2, call it P. Actually, I'll call it P1. Do that, connect it in, come up here, make sure I've changed the letter. And then again, go to translation and move it across like so. Now I'm going to do this for all of them. I'm going to speed this up. All right. So there we are, we're all nicely lined up. Right, next thing we need to do, clicking on this merge here, we're gonna hit Shift Spacebar, and we're looking for a transform, but it's the 3D one, so it's this one here. So click on that. Now our text comes in, it, finish, it lands at frame 10, so what we're gonna do is on the transform, we're gonna come over and we're gonna hit a keyframe on the Z. We're gonna come forward to say frame 40, Hit a keyframe on the Z as well, and then say go to frame 55 and click on the Z as, as well. Now I'm going to go back to that middle one at frame 40. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring our text all the way forward like that. Now when I play that back, very cool. We're going to go. We're going to go to the letter H. We're going to go to frame 10. We're going to click a keyframe on uh, the translation, on, sorry, on the rotation. We're going to go to frame 40. Same again, rotation, rotation, rotation. And we're going to go frame 55. Same, same, same. We're going to go back to that frame 40, and now we can have some fun. So what we're going to do is we can rotate it in the Y. Oh, I hit the translation there. So make sure you're on rotation. You can rotate it. There we are. And now when we play that back, what will happen is, there we are. I'm going to do the same for all the other letters. I'm going to speed it up. So, but essentially that it gives you the idea. You click on the letter, go to frame 10, click a keyframe on the rotation, go to frame 55, same again, go to frame 40, change its rotation. Do something wacky with it. And then when we play it back, get this. I'm going to do that for all of them. All right. So when you finish, you should have something that looks like this. Just so we're not distracted, what I'm going to quickly do is just disconnect this green text now because we're finished with that and connect that across like that. Right, let's set up some smoothing. We're going to go to our transform just here. We're going to click on the spine control and it'll bring bring up this window here and bring that across. Click on this and then come over and hit zoom to fit like that. And as you can see from this, it's looking very, very uh, rigid. So I'm going to take these keyframes here and I'm going to hit S. And what we're going to do is on this first keyframe and give that a nice long loop like that. Let's check that. Very cool. That's exactly what we wanted. Right. We're going to do the same for all the uh, letters. So clicking on the H, go to the spine tool, make sure it's selected. It seemed to fit like that. In this case, I'm just going to select the middle ones, hit S to smooth. And then I'm just going to go crazy and pull them all across to the right. Again, do this for all of them.
And now when I play it back. Right, what we're going to do now is we are going to connect that background in. And the way we do that is here's our original blue background. You cannot connect a background into a 3D world like you would normally in the 2D world. So here's our background. If I try and connect that to that merge, watch what happens. It ain't ever it. It is not a background. The reason for that, we need to grab a image plane, which is this one here. And we need to connect it across like that. And then we can connect it into the merge like that. And it is looking small. So what we can do, go to the image plane. Where is this scale? It's over here. There we are, that's what we need. We'll scale that right up and move it up in the Y. And as you can see from that, even though that locked out at five, I can still make it go bigger by just typing in a number. Right, we now need to create a floor and it's very easy to do. We're just gonna copy these two nodes here. Right click on them, hit copy, blank area, right click and hit paste. We're then gonna take this one, connect it into the merge. So clicking on the image plane, come across to the transform and on the X rotation, change that to 90 like that. We now need to change its scale because it's way too small. So we're going to make it 20. And what we'll do is we'll drag it forward like so. And then we'll go to the right hand side, bring it down a little bit as well, just so it's under those text. One of the things you'll notice is that we're not getting any shadows. It's all kind of blow now and that is because the way uh, uh, Fusion works is you need to click on the merge, go across here and hit pass through lights, go to this merge, click pass through lights, go to the renderer and change it from software renderer to hardware renderer and then change enable lighting, enable shadows like that and everything goes black. So we're going to click on this merge and we're going to hit shift space bar and we're typing in light we're actually looking for a directional light, which is this one here. The directional light is a weird one. It works more on rotation than it does on position. So if I go here, for instance, and change that, you see what it's done? And we have no light on our floor. Why do we not have lights on our floor? Let's change it to minus 90 to see if that's the problem. Yeah, there we are. So it should have been minus 90, Charles. Yeah, your job done right. So we've got our directional light and it's creating that. Let's go to our spotlight. Now what we need to do on the spotlight is change it from no decay to quadratic. We also need, if you look at it, it's, it's not pointing anywhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the top view. We're gonna pull it back, pull it across to the side like that. And we can get it to target text. Let's see if it does it. Oh, no, we want this one. Yep, it's targeting the text. So if I move that in or out or move it around, what you'll see it always targets the text. We need to change the um, clicking on the light again, go to the controls, change the cone angle, give it a wide cone angle, and the penumba dumba 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 angle, which affects how the shadows uh, hit the, um, hit the uh, side of the object on the light. I don't know if that made any sense. It did to me. Right, so um, let's add another light. So we're gonna click in a blank area, shift space bar, and we'll add an ambient light. And we're gonna connect that in like that. And there we are, we're starting to get the look that we're after. Right, now what we need to do is go over to our directional light just here. Uh, make sure enable shadows is clicked. Come down to here, and where it says softness, change that to constant. And then what you'll find is you can actually change the, the uh, softness of the shadow and its weight. So I don't know about you, but I do enjoy a heavy shadow. Uh, we'll just keep it there. Let's just see what the softness does. That's not bad. Kind of like that. Let's play that back and see how that looks. So we can actually uh, control the uh, shadow depth uh, using the density map. So if I click here on frame 40, and we know it finishes at frame 55. So at frame 55, I can change that down back to zero. We can go over to frame 10 and do exactly the same thing again. Take that down to zero so that when we play it back, we get this. 
Right, let's go into our 2D world again. And what we're going to do is we are going to connect our 2D letters across. Right, first thing we need to do is we need to set up a um, in and out quick fade. So our text is at frame 10. So now what we need to do is fade the text in and out. So coming across to the text, go over to the shading and you'll see here it's got opacity. If I take that down, you'll see it vanishes. So at frame 10, we want it to be uh, at one. At frame 11, we want it to go to zero like that. And now when we play it back, what we can have it do is at frame 55, we can have it come back in. So at frame 54, we'll make it at zero. And at frame 55, we'll make it at one. Let's change the color. We're going to make it white again. Let's play that back. Next thing I did was after the renderer here, I added a blur. Connect that blur across like this. I went to frame 40 and just gave it a little bit of blur. Not too much. Create a keyframe. Go back to frame 10. Make it zero. Go to frame 55 and make it zero again. So before we finish off, guys, I want to do one more thing. And that is, is if you click on the text on the H here and go over to shading, you come down to the specular. Take the specular down, sorry, the specular exponent like that and do it for all of them. And then it will just change the look. It's looking a bit harsh at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. It was fun to make. The files are available to download off my site uh, for free. Uh, the um, the only other thing that I did to the uh, composition was I created what's called a shadow uh, catcher, uh, which is not easy to do. And um, I thought would make this tutorial too long. But if you download the file, you will see it's all in there and you'll, you'll be able to understand it straight away. Like I say, all you need to do if you want to put in your own text is go back in, go down here and just change the letters to match what you want. And you can add as many letters to that merge as you want uh, and make it as big as you want as well. So if you have any comments or suggestions for future tutorials, please leave it. Uh, leave me a message below. I do read them and I love reading them actually. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.